Hey there guys and welcome back. So we are actually at the end of the course. I mean the course is complete. I mean, but we're just a little bit left. Uh, so, you know, we're done with 99% and there are a couple of small things that the Adobe XD allows us to do, but I never actually got around to that because I actually uh, never needed to use it in the course. So I thought of making a separate video on all the things that, you know, we didn't cover up in the previous parts. So this is going to be like a bonus video where I'm going to show you more cool stuff that Adobe XD allows us to do. So let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are. So this is my final set of artboards. And what I'm going to do is if I go here and click on the prototype or uh, the desktop preview, uh, we're going to get this. So which is actually basically the prototype. Now what I'm trying to show you is I can actually record my videos as an MOV and share it with other people. Unfortunately, this is available only on the Mac and not on Windows platform. I really don't know why Adobe XD does that. I don't know why they can't just give all the options to both the platform anyways so if you are on Mac you're gonna see a small record button over here and you just click on that and it can it'll actually detect your cursor and where you click and the interaction and then you can click again to stop it and you're gonna end up seeing a dialog box which is going to give you your options to save your file and you're gonna get a dialog box which is gonna allow you to choose your destination to save it okay so the next thing is the integration between various softwares like Photoshop Illustrator sketch and things like that with Adobe XD so let me just go ahead and actually drag all this up and I just want to clear camera space right here now let me go into Illustrator and I have just created this small document now there are two things we have a shape uh, which is basically a simple rectangle and here is a text which is not expanded so I can still go ahead and you know change the text so yeah just um, want to point that out now what I can do is if I click on this, I can press Ctrl C to copy and I can come to Adobe XD and choose Ctrl V and it's going to paste it right over there. And since I'm copying it from a vector based software, uh, I'm using Illustrator, but you can also do the same thing, uh, you know, with Sketch or Corel Draw. I can actually go and change the color of this and make this editable. So it's a complete editable object because it is an S because it is vector based and that is the integration between uh, Adobe XD and uh, these kind of vector based softwares. Now let's try the same thing with the text. What's gonna happen if I copy the text and if I come here to Adobe XD and choose paste. So as you can see, we have our text over here. Let me zoom in. And as you can see, it doesn't pixelate because obviously these are vector based. Um, and I can go and change the text of this to whatever I want. So we can call this uh, just Adobe. So there you go. And I can even go and change the font. Let's try just, just, like, just like a random font. I don't know, just like a, yeah, like a random font. There you go. That's pretty cool. But if I go and choose um, expand, which which I can no longer go ahead and edit, I can still copy this and paste it. But what now it allows me to do is just change the color and not the text itself. So if I just click on this, right click and choose ungroup, I can just select all these elements and then change the color. You know, uh, it's pretty handy. Uh, I can even go and change individually. So uh, that's an important thing. Now another thing you want to note is if I select this object which is still editable, uh, you know, with the text, I can go right click, path and choose convert to path. What that's going to do is going to create it into a basic path and I can go ahead and change the color of this but I can no longer edit this. So I can no longer edit because it's now a path and not a vector based text object. Okay, so now let's move over a little bit this side and let's go into Photoshop. So here is the actual thumbnail that I've been making in Photoshop. Now what Photoshop allows you to do is to copy bitmap images. You, act, you can't actually copy elements and uh, edit them in Adobe XD because they're not, Photoshop isn't actually a vector based uh, software. So in case you want to copy part, part of your images, uh, there is a way to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just create a selection or whatever I want. Uh, so if I just go to my marquee tool and just create a selection like so. I can go to the edit menu and choose copy merged and what I can do is I can come back over here and choose control V and that's going to paste that part of the thing I copied. Now if I go back and I, instead of choosing edit merge, if I choose copy instead of copy merged, um, if I come here and let's see, let's just place it over here, you can see it copies only the layer which I have selected it from. So that is the difference between copy merge and just copy. So that's how you integrate elements from different softwares into Adobe XD. Now there's another thing which I want to mention. So if I go here to my web browser, as you can see I have this scenery image. Now I can right click, choose copy 
and I can come over here and choose paste and that's gonna paste it right over here now if I scale it uh, you can see the quality does diminish a little because the resolution of this photo is not that big it's a pretty small photo as you can see over here so that's how you copy elements from the web browser directly into Adobe XD now there are two tools which I did not uh, explain in the course so I'm gonna do that right now so one is the pen tool right over here now what the pen tool allows you to do is to create shapes and curves uh, freehand without using any primitive objects so if I go and just create an artboard right over here I have a simple artboard and I get the pen tool uh, what I can do is I can just click and I can go hold down and then just to create a curve I can hold down shift so it you know it snaps and I can get a very good angle I can also hold down alt if I want to move only one of these tangents as you can see over here so for now let's just create a simple graphical curve uh, you know, like that I can hold down shift there you go I can even go and just select these points individually and just move them out so I get a nice curve and I can just continue drawing back again like so uh, let me just close this up you know like so beautiful there we go and then what I can do is I can obviously go and reduce the border create a fill for me and I can probably set this to a red color and all the options such as adding a shadow border background blur still apply just like in any primitive object now for example um, if I come here to my pen tool you can see I have all these various points so let me just close that and for example I don't want this point so what I can do is I can just click on it and hit delete and that's gonna delete the point but what if I want to add a point pretty simple just get the pen tool and, and I can click anywhere on the path and that's gonna go and create another another anchor point for me and I can edit that manually as well Another thing we want to talk about is the Pathfinder tool. So the Pathfinder options are right over here. So another thing I want to talk about is the Pathfinder options. So these options are present right over here. So obviously they are grayed out now because there's nothing for me to edit with that. So if I, let's go and create a small rectangle like so. Okay, that's a pretty big rectangle, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to set the color of this to black. Okay, now let's go and create a circle as well. So let me just create a circle over here and change the color of this to red so we can actually see all the difference now if I select both of these objects and I can come over here and you can see it says add and if I click on that it's going to convert all this into one single object and now I can manually edit this like so so this helped me to combine object now for example if I select both of these two and click on this button which says subtract you can see it creates it cuts a hole right over here and I can go right click and choose ungroup and that's going to get that circle back to me so if I go and right click and choose mask with shape I'm gonna get the reverse version so I'm basically masking this let me control Z that now if I select these two and come over here and choose intersect it's gonna give me this one which is basically the mask with shape option that I just previously showed you and the last one is if I select this option which is extrude overlap it's gonna cut out the parts which are intersecting and give me only the ones which are remaining and obviously want to get them back I can right click and choose ungroup and boom we have our objects ready to use so that's how we can use these Pathfinder options in Adobe XD to create some cool interesting shapes so that's wrapped it up for this video and I think this is the end of the course there's gonna be one single last video that I really appreciate if you guys watched so I'll see you guys in the next video